I want to clarify referential transparency, what it is, what it has to do with side effects, and break some common misconceptions. For instance, how is it possible that the function with no side effects can print into the console? Note that this concept goes way beyond functional programming and even programming in general. But let's start on a bit of a tangent. Um, let's talk about pure functions. A pure function computes its result given its inputs and has no other observable effects on the rest of the program. Let's look at the pseudocode example. Here we have some pure function which in its signature says that it takes an int and returns a different int. If you look at the body, it does what it says. It takes an int, it uses this int and returns some different integer. And on the contrary, if you look at the impure function example, it tells us in the signatures that it takes an integer and it runs an integer, but in the reality it does something else. It goes to the database, it talks to some external server, and it returns a random integer. So in this case, its function signature is basically a lie. So pure functions allow us to know precisely what it does just by looking at signature. And the cool thing about it is that it's not so mathematical or something like that. The cool thing is that it has this property and there is way more to this property. This property is called referential transparency. It's not tied to the functions. It can be applied to function, to expressions, to code, to programs in general. For instance, referentially transparent expression can be replaced with its value without the change in the program's behavior and vice versa. The following two snippets should be the same. If we have some variable a, we can substitute it with an actual expression and the program should stay the same. Imagine we want to calculate some simple math. We have an expression where a is 3 and a plus 1 plus a multiplied by 4, the result is 16. We can replace a with 3 and the result stays the same, it stays 16. We can do the same exercise with strings where plus plus is a string concatenation and three plus three just three twice. And if we replace an A with three, the expression stays the same. Before we move to more complex examples, which include printing to the console, let's see why should we even bother with referential transparency. Referential transparency improves the quality of life of developers and allows some program optimizations. The property guarantees that the code is context independent, which allows local reasoning and code reusability. It means that you can take a piece of code and actually understand it, reason about it, and don't worry about the state of the program or state of the world. Suppose we have an equals function that compares two URLs for equality. It just says, okay, equals, take two URLs and return the Boolean. Looks quite innocent, but the catch is that it's a Java function. And there is no such thing as a referential transparency in Java. So when you use this function without internet connection, it just doesn't work. I repeat, a function, technically a method that should simply compare two objects and return a Boolean either works or doesn't depending on your network status. And if you're wondering from the docs, it said the two hosts are considered equivalent if both host names can be resolved into the same IP address. So the equals performs DNS resolution. Uh, as much as I love this example, we should move on. If the code is context independent, it means it's deterministic. We can refactor it and write tests for it easily because all the inputs can be easily passed as arguments. You don't need to mock or integrate anything. The behavior is explicit and expected. And because it's deterministic, it can be optimized. The computation can be cached or even parallelized because the outputs are defined by the inputs and don't interact. Also, a compiler or the runtime can execute the code in whichever order it wants. Overall, thanks to referential transparency, we get a more maintainable code with more opportunities for optimizations. And since you're still here, I'm gonna let you in on the secret. Functional programmers are not some sort of monks that write their programs on the papers. We print stuff, we talk to the databases, we talk to other services. We just use a different definition of the term side effect. In pure functional programming, side effects are things that break referential transparency. When we talk about programs without side effects, we mean programs without breaking or violating referential transparency. If we want to refer to things like input and output or talking to a database, we use the term computational effects or effect. Well, sometimes we also say side effects, but it's because languages are complicated and it can be confusing and 
and it can be confusing and ambiguous depending who you're talking to and the context and stuff. Okay, let's make some chaos and print some nonsense. We'll start with a Rust example, but it applies to any language without referential transparency. Java, JavaScript, Go, whatever. The languages where you have to keep an eye on your code. The code might not behave as expected and a simple refactoring can break your logic. So let's test it. We have a variable a, which is an expression that prints something and returns three. When we evaluate the result, a is also evaluated. The toast is done printed. A becomes 3, the result becomes 16, which also gets printed. If we inline A, first of all, it looks a bit ugly, but second, we get a completely different behavior. This second version prints text twice. And in most languages, we can perform arbitrary side effects anywhere and anytime. So you should not expect any referential transparency. But there are languages such as Scala, which give you some control over referential transparency. We can do the same exercise we done with Rust, but we can go one step further and add some asynchronous code. Imagine we have two functions which do some arbitrary side effects. The first function does some side effects and returns one, and the second function does some other side effects and returns two future represents the result of an asynchronous computation, which may become available at some point. When we create a new future, Kala starts an asynchronous computation and returns a future holding the result of that computation. So let's use it and spawn some computation. Now that we need to provide an implicit execution context to run this code. I think execution is unpredictable. By looking at this, we as developers should not expect any guarantees about execution order. We can see the effects from the computation A first or from the computation B first. It's up to the thread pools and compilers to decide. And, and it's okay, that's the whole premise of async programming. What is not okay is that if we try to refactor this code and in the variables, we get a different program. This one is sequential. Why? And how did refactoring the program broke the logic again? Well, it's because the future is not referential transparent. Luckily, there are multiple referential transparent alternatives in Scala. One of them is cats-effect.io. Note that IO is not the same as input output. A value of type IOA is a computation that when evaluated can perform effects before returning a value of type A. IO data type is similar to future but its values are pure and preserve referential transparency. So the following two programs are going to be equivalent. This computation will run sequentially, first A and then B. And if you want to run them in parallel, we have to be explicit. So what's happening here and how is IO referential transparent and future is not? Let's switch to Haskell and debunk IO data type. Haskell is pure. How can any function with the same arguments return the same result? And Make sure that you're paying attention right now because an important bit is coming. Haskell separates expression evaluation from action execution. Expression evaluation is a world where pure function live, which is always referentially transparent. Action execution is not referentially transparent. Haskell also has an IO data type. As I mentioned before, IO A is a computation when executed it can perform arbitrary effects before returning a value of type A. And here comes the essential part. Executing I.O. not the same as evaluating it. Evaluating an I.O. expression is pure. For instance, here is a type signature of the function print. The function returns a pure value of I.O. unit, a value like any other. We can pass them around, store them in the collection, whatever. Okay, we have an I.O. function, so how do we run it? Or what do we do with it? We need to define the main I.O. function of the program the program entry point, which will be executed by the Haskell runtime. Let's look at the example of the executable module. This one asks for the username, reads it, and then prints a greeting. If we run this program and pass it a name like Ali, for example, it will print back a greeting, hello Ali. And this differs from all the languages where we can perform arbitrary effects anywhere, anytime we want. We cannot print outside of IO in Haskell. We get a compilation error if we try otherwise. And here is some trivia before we wrap up. Referential transparency has a truth in analytical philosophy. The referent is a thing that an expression refers to. Can substitute the referrer without changing the meaning of the expression. For example, let's take this statement. The author of My Bologna is best known for creating comedy songs. The author of My Bologna refers to We're Al. This statement is referentially transparent 
because the author of my Bologna can be replaced with Rear Al. The message will have the same meaning. Rear Al is best known for creating comedy songs, but the following statement is not referentially transparent. My Bologna is Rear Al's first song. We cannot do such a replacement because it produces a sentence with an entirely different meaning. My Bologna is the author of my Bologna's first song. Doesn't make that much sense. So, in conclusion, a side effect is a lack of referential transparency. Referentially transparent code allows us to trust the functions and reason about the code. It gives us the following local reasoning, smaller debugging overhead, maintainable code, explicit and expected behavior, and less painful refactoring. This property is a crucial advantage and a source of many good things in a pure functional programming. And if you want a couple of cheat sheets and recaps, I linked a couple of pictures in the description.